Please stand and join us. <laughs> you a new one this morning. This is called Leap of Faith. I'm going to take it one line at a time and then we'll go through it a few times. I will take this leap of faith. Do that with me. I will take this leap of faith. Spread my wings and fly. Ready? Spread my wings and fly. I will know the truth of who I am. I will know the truth of who I am. And I will write it on the sky. Let's go. And I will write it on the sky. OK, now let's go. <laughs> I will take this leap of faith. Spread my wings and fly. I will know the truth of who I am, and I will ride on the sky. I will take this leap of faith. Spread my wings and fly. I will know the truth of who I am, and I will ride it on the sky. I will take this. Leap of faith, spread my wings and fly. I will know the truth of who I am, and I will write it on the sky. I will know the truth of who I am, and I will write it on the sky. Have a seat. Good morning. Good morning. 
Welcome to Unity of Walnut Creek. I am Mickey McCabe-Walls, and it is my pleasure to welcome you to this service. Please join me in waving to our online friends. They're going to see you. They can see you. Your presence adds to our spiritual community, and we appreciate you. And we, before we begin our service, if you could turn off your cell phones, that would be great. Thank you. And we are blessed to have as our musicians today, Bev Barnett and Greg Newland, who will be joined by Megan Diamond. Thank you. <laughs> Let's open our service today by focusing our intention uh, through our opening affirmation. Please join me in prayerfully and powerfully speaking it three times. Take a deep, deep breath. Together, there is only one presence and one power in the universe and in my life, the all-loving goodness of God. Again, there is only one presence and one power in the universe and in my life the all-loving goodness of God. Take a deep breath. And one more time. There is only one presence and one power in the universe and in my life, the all-loving goodness of God. Let's continue by reading aloud the statement of our unity. God's love is within each of us, guiding us to dynamically express our wholeness, wisdom, and abundance. We acknowledge the universal wisdom in the Christ teachings and in all spiritual paths. I now choose to open to the presence of divine love and to be changed at depth. Throughout this sacred time, God is uplifting me and through my heart, the world. This morning, Jack Schaefer is going to be reading our daily word. <coughs> the word for today is awakening. Every time I pray, every time I have a realization of the Christ power within me, I awaken to my spiritual nature as I let the light of Christ shine within my consciousness, I release old ways of living and open to a new life, a new way of being. Early Christians told the story of Lazarus, who appeared to be dead to everyone except Jesus. Jesus called him from the tomb. My Christ nature can transcend any appearance or condition and allow me to awaken into a new life of oneness and wholeness, of harmony and abundance, of understanding and peace. By turning to the Christ presence within me, I awaken my spirit. I hear my Christ nature calling me and I awaken to a new life. From the scripture, John 11, 11. Our friend Lazarus has fallen asleep, but I'm going to awaken him. And the affirmation for today, through the power of my Christ nature, I awaken to a new life. Would you all repeat that with me? Through the power of my Christ nature, I awaken to a new life. One more time, just to ingrain that. Through the power of my Christ nature, I awaken to a new life. I see trees of green, red roses too. I see them bloom for me and you. And I picture myself. What a wonderful world. I see skies. 
upcoming events. The details and other wonderful activities are found in our bulletin and on the website. Please join your Unity community on the 4th of July, that is. It's a bring your own whatever to the barbecue and a side dish or, or salad to share. We will provide the drinks, ice cream, games for the kids, and the fun. Leadership training is on July 10th for those who currently or intend at some time to lead small groups, large groups, or committees. Please read in today's bulletin for the details. The Spiritual Education and Enrichment, or SEE team, has put together a beautiful brochure that is now available on the, the patio outside. And our musicians, Bev Barnett and Greg Newland, will have CDs available for purchase after the service. And please sign up to receive news of their new CD due out this September. I'd like to welcome guests today. Uh, if you are here with us for the first time, we invite you to raise your hand so we can acknowledge you. Do we have any, any wonderful? Keep your hand up. Anyone else? Oh, we have a few new people in the back row. Any other new friends? Please keep your hand up until we bring you a shell lay. On that lay is an affirmation that reads, just as God has, every, has a design for every shell of the sea, so God has a design for your life. We want to welcome you by opening our arms and sending you a sincere blessing. And just a little reminder, it's a little bit different than we're used to. So read, read our screens up ahead here. So together, we love you, we bless you, and we behold the light of God shining through you. Welcome. Please. So enjoy taking a moment to greet each other until the music begins. Struggling just to make it through and 
another day You've got to let it go Let it all go And this is what you've got to say well, I release and I let go I let the spirit run my life And my heart is open wide Yes, I'm only here for God well, No more struggle, no more strife With my faith I see the light With my faith I see the light I am free in the spirit Yes, I'm only here for God I am free in the spirit Yes, I'm only here for We invite you to prepare for our time of prayer and meditation, which will be led today by our heart minister, CL. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And all these things will be added unto you. Alleluia, alleluia. Ask and it shall be given unto you. Seek and ye shall Knock and the door will be opened unto you. Allelu, alleluia. 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 It is an honor to gather together in prayer and meditation and to connect heart to heart with one another in faith. We are one in God and we prepare to experience the abundant goodness of God by opening our hearts in sacred prayer and meditation. Let us center ourselves in the prayer of God. Embraced by divine love, we rest in the sacredness of God's peace. We breathe deeply through our hearts, becoming aware of the presence of God within. With each inhalation, we relax more fully. And with each exhalation, we release the concerns of the day. In this quiet moment, we open ourselves to divine love. We are peaceful and confident in this awareness. As we focus on our oneness with God, visualize a small ball of golden light within you. Notice that it grows and expands to encompass your whole being. And with each breath you take, as God's beloved, 
we are filled with that divine light. And in this time of quietness, trust God's guiding light as you enter into a time of silent meditation and prayer. And with Jesus' words, peace be still. Peace be still. with gratitude, we now turn our thoughts to love and peace in a spirit of oneness with one another and with every person in the world, whether in church or synagogue or mosque. We affirm our oneness with our loved ones and with those in our community. We affirm our oneness with those across the nation and across the world. We affirm we are one with God. And we all say, Amen. We are pleased to have Garrett Rigg with us today to be our guest speaker. Garrett is an attorney who has taught many classes on theosophy, science, history, and spirituality. His emphasis is on comparative religion, nonviolent communication, heart math, and meditation. You will not want to miss his workshop this afternoon on near-death experience. Please join me in welcoming Garrett Rigg. Beautiful day. I'm very privileged to <laughs> greet you all, and now you can hear me, <laughs> which makes the experience a little better. Uh, <clears throat> and I'm here to share with you and to give Reverend David a break. Reverend David, you know, has done so much. We all know how wonderfully he educates us on a higher level, 
inspires us and uh, even entertains us. And he's been doing wonderful work around the world for the Association of Unity Churches. And he suggested that I share some of what I've been doing with a group called uh, Consciousness Meetup. It deals with studying spiritual matters from a scientific point of view, usually. And we had some uh, classes on near-death experiences. And I sent David the notes, and he said, Garrett, this would be good to share with the congregation. I've already found out that a lot of people here have studied the field, and a number of you have had those kinds of experiences. But for those who haven't, I want to explain why we're doing the workshop, and give you a an introduction to the field. Uh, I was privileged in those classes to have two women um, from Unity here who had had near-death experiences, quite different ones, um, but with the same general message. And what is always impressive, inspiring when I read these near-death stories is how similar the messages are. They may be clothed in a little bit different images, interpretations. Um, they may come from different religious traditions. But the message is almost always the same. And it's an incredible message. And a lot of times, you know, in life, and even in churches, we don't talk much about death, because we don't know much about it. I mean, there isn't very much in the Christian Bible about what happens after death. So it's, it's a great unknown, and of course it's a great fear because we're missing, we're gone from this world, we know that. And, you know, the Course in Miracles says that everything comes out of love or fear, and the ultimate fear is death. It's, you know, ending. So, we've had mystical experiences, um, a lot of mystical experiences, especially with people in unity. Oftentimes, that's what compels us to leave a more traditional church and search for something that's a little broader and more universal. Um, and the NDEs, the near-death experiences, are simply a new and very much studied um, mystical experience spiritual experience. And without intruding on your personal privacy, I won't ask anybody to, to volunteer right now, <laughs> but I'm wondering how many in the congregation have had some kind of deep, meaningful experience that seemed to come from a different dimension or more spiritual realm and it has affected your life. Can I have a show of hands? Wow, wow, okay, this is unity. <laughs> And this is wonderful. So you already have uh, probably a feeling that will help you to grasp and, and share some of the experiences I want to give you. And I haven't had an NDE myself. Um, I've had some very spiritual experiences. Nothing on the scale of what many, many people get in these NDEs. So I'm going to give you a little science this morning, a little history perhaps, um, and read you from at least two or three different uh, experiences that people had. So the science part of it, um, let me tell you how it kind of started. Uh, different medical doctors who have a very materialistic training and are actually trained not to bring in spiritual issues because they can be controversial, had patients who they helped recover from nearly dying or technically being dead for minutes at a time, these patients told the doctors uh, strange things. And they were very convinced that they'd had major experience while they shouldn't have had any experience at all because their heart had stopped, the blood stopped to the brain, the brain's electrical system closed down, and there was no more action in the brain, so there was no thinking, there was no feeling, there was no sensing, there was no way to see or hear or anything. During those times, well, let me give you one example. Dr. Melvin Morse is a child trauma doctor, emergency doctor for children dying. One of his first patients 
was an eight-year-old girl. When he came to her bedside, she was just waking up from being sewn up and surgeried and all kinds of things. She was angry at him. She says, Doctor, why did you put that tube down my nose? And the doctor was dumbfounded because she was completely unconscious. You know, was, she was more unconscious by far than if she had been knocked out with an anesthesiology. Not only that, but she then berated the doctor for having used bad words. She says, I can't use those words at home. <laughs> and the doctor, of course, was very embarrassed because he was very afraid of losing this girl, that she was dying, and he was cussing, as a lot of people do when they're under stress. So there was, beyond that, the little girl even remembered what kind of instruments he had used in some of the surgery and, and other things. So he was astounded that this person who had no way of seeing, hearing, or knowing, or thinking even had watched the operation. And then she brought back a lot of spiritual sharing, even at this little age. She had gone to heaven. She had a guardian angel who had talked to her and taught her everything and made her happy and reassured her. And it wasn't a bad experience at all. It was the most wonderful, beautiful, incredible experience that she had ever had. And that's absolutely typical. Of those who have near-death events, 10 to 30%, depending on the study, remember something about them. And about 90% of those are very positive. And even the ones that are negative often have a positive result. These experiences are life-changing. Now, I read about this. I heard it on the radio. It didn't impact me that much until we had our consciousness class. And Amy and Sean shared shared from their hearts, and it was a very profound experience. Uh, everybody in the class was basically transformed. We had the spiritual ideas. We'd studied metaphysics, philosophy, history, the rest of it. But you don't have that certainty. You don't have that gut feeling. You don't have that inner knowledge, the gnosis, until you've either experienced it or been close to somebody that has. So one reason for doing this workshop is that it's a very personal experience. It's as sacred as it can be. And most people don't share it with anybody. Maybe they share it with some of the people in their family or their minister or their psychologist or their doctor. But until the last 50 years, most of these people, when they would share it, even with their loved ones, would get a response that, oh, we don't talk about that, or you must have been hallucinating. Or that was just a dream, dear. Don't pay any attention. Well, thanks to over a dozen scientists and doctors, we have tremendous amount of statistical, even objective evidence that these are real experiences. These are real capabilities of the consciousness to leave the physical body. That we are not simply our brain and our body. And it gives another dimension and a great deal more credibility to all these wonderful teachings that we have from hundreds or thousands of years ago. A lot of the things I read from Theosophy, which goes back to 1880, didn't always make sense. I didn't quite grasp why it would be that way. When I read the near-death experiences and hear them, it just fits together and it seems like it's a natural now. Um, for example, when I was a kid, I was always fascinated by the stories I learned in theosophy that when a person dies, very often they come close to dying. Um, in fact, one of the parishioners told me that when she was falling 80 feet through the, from a silo and luckily hit something soft, she had a life review instantaneous. See her whole life in a few seconds going past like on a high-speed film. But with most people who have NDEs, even if it takes a few seconds or minutes, they experience every moment of their life as if they're there with all the feelings. And not only that, 
they experience what other people around them are experiencing, if you can imagine. It's like watching five films at once at, you know, a hundred times, a thousand times normal speed. And the whole point of it is not that it's some kind of judgment day or we're being decided if we can go into heaven or not. It's a learning exercise, which is what they tell us life is. And there's no outside judge. There's usually a guardian angel, an elder brother, maybe even Jesus at their side as they have this judgment or they have this review. And they're just learning about how they affect people and how what the most harmonious and wise way is to be in the world. So the, the, the panoramic life review is an instant learning tool. People who are very hard-hearted, egotistical, driven by competition, suddenly change their complete personality. If you study psychology, you know it's very hard to change a person's character or personality. We change superficially a little, deep down at our core, not big changes, unless you've had some of these mystical experiences. And, and so the psychologists now are getting to the act and studying what happens to people after the NDEs. Um, <clears throat> one prof particular professor of psychology at the University of Connecticut, his name is uh, Ring, um, has written a book called Lessons from the Light. He also teaches a course, a semester course on near-death experiences. If you can imagine, like 50 hours studying this just in class. It's a field that's so rich and so full and so instructive. Anyway, in his book, he has a number of stories. Um, and before I get into the story, let me explain to you why stories work so well. You know, Jesus taught with parables, stories, myths, folklore, whatever. Stories allow us to identify and get our emotions involved and our minds, our intellect. So it's a way of bringing the whole person together so we remember it and so we also learn it at a gut level. And we learn from each other, partly the intellectual stuff that you can read in a book, but partly if we connect heart to heart. And many of you have studied the heart map with Reverend David. Uh, I'm sure probably half of you at least. In heart math, they're doing lots of experiments, and other people are too, but the heart math experiment that I liked were people who were good at getting coherence in their heartbeats were asked to try to affect the DNA in test tubes. This was a rigorous scientific experiment, and what they found was that people who have their heart in the right place with gratitude and love and appreciation can actually change the DNA by twisting it tighter or untwisting it. And scientists can measure these twists in the DNA. It's quite fascinating. Um, I'm assuming it's the spiral that the DNA forms, how tightly it's twisted. But it's a standard scientific measure. And normal people have a very small effect. Those who can focus on the heart with heart math connect on this other level. It's also an instantaneous level. Stanford University does experiments and shows that when you put your blood in a test tube and you put it in a separate room surrounded by a Faraday cage so no radio waves, no light, no messages can get into it, and then they show you pictures of accidents or pictures of uh, beautiful flowers and things, you have emotional reactions to those pictures. As you have the reaction, your blood cells in the other room react instantly, faster than the speed of light. And other studies have shown that mental telepathy and intentions like that can work instantly between Seattle and Korea, 5,000 miles away. So there's this other level, this other plane, that hard science now is telling us can be there. Um, if you've studied a little bit of modern quantum physics, the latest theory is that we have 10 dimensions, not just four or five, 
way beyond space and time. The 11th dimension is the web that holds them all. This is hard science. A thousand physicists are working on this. And these dimensions could be the place where the afterlife is experienced. Those who go into it from NDEs or other things say it's the most real experience they've ever had. It's absolutely stunning. And let me go back now with that background, <laughs> read you from one of Dr. Ring's young students. He was uh, a very aggressive, athletic young man. <clears throat> He's going to go into business and make a lot of money. He's floating down the river with his friends, and he goes into a whirlpool, and he gets stuck underwater. And he drowns. And first thing he realizes, he's looking down over the water, and he doesn't understand, but his friends are all scurrying around. They're all, he can feel their feelings. They're all scared and shocked. And he realizes they're looking for him under the water. And he wants to tell them, I'm OK, because he is feeling wonderful. He has never felt better. He's not in his body. He's looking down on it, just like that little girl was, looking down on her operation. Now, this young man also had an NDE, or I'm sorry, a life review. And <clears throat> he says, scenes from my life began to pass before my eyes at super high speeds. I was looking at my life objectively for the first time. I saw myself sitting in a baby's chair, baby's high chair, throwing food on the floor. My mom was there telling me that good boys do not throw food on the floor. So this goes back a little before his regular physical memory. He saw himself when he was three years old in a canoe with his father, and he saw his father's worry and fear that he might fall out of the canoe. He saw the rest of his life. And then he realized that it was dark and quiet. He was going through a dark void. It was like a tunnel. About 65% of people have a tunnel in the United States when they go through the near-death experience. I could see a small pinpoint of light getting bigger. I felt homesick for the earth. The light floated toward me. Soon. The light engulfed me. And I felt as if I became one with the light. It seemed to have knowledge of everything there is to know and accepted me as a part of it. So when we have these lovely meditations, as Seal just did, with the light and we're identifying with it, that's something real. That's a light beyond the physical light. It's kind of like the light, if any of you have read the Bhagavad Gita, where Arjuna, the prince, wants to see Krishna in his ultimate deific form. And he says, oh my gosh, oh my God. <laughs> he says, this light is like a thousand suns. But it's something you can look at because we're part of it. Anyway, going on, this young man says, I felt all-knowing. Suddenly, everything seemed to make perfect sense. The whole world seemed to be in total harmony something he'd never experienced or expected. He thought the world was about fighting and getting your own, and screw, excuse me, you know, and the heck with everybody else. <laughs> anyway, he says, the world was in harmony. The questions and answers were on a much higher plane of thought. I felt better than I'd ever felt in my life, as if I were bathing in total love and understanding. I felt like I was an energy form that could never be destroyed. Now, Dr. Ring goes on for pages from this young man, and he ends up saying that his experience was quite typical, and it included a number of the typical experiences that people have. Um, and those vary from researcher to researcher, but they're usually between 9 and 14. Here's 12 of them. The out-of-body experience we mentioned, heightened senses, everything's extremely real, intense emotional feelings, 
almost always very positive. It's bliss. There really is bliss. <laughs> Three, or four, excuse me, passing into a tunnel or dark place, encountering a being of light. Now that being may be Jesus, Buddha, it might be your Aunt Gertrude who just died a year ago. Somebody that you love and trust is always there. There's a sense of altering space and time. Amy's NDE, which she put online for a survey, probably took place in a matter of minutes, maybe 20 minutes, but she wrote 12 pages and didn't include it all. So there's a, the time frame is very compressed. There's an encounter with heavenly realms. Many people see this as a beautiful countryside where all the colors are just absolutely vibrant and jump out at you. Other people hear the most gorgeous music in the world. Other people get into mathematics. In fact, Amy did. And she'd never liked mathematics in school. Um, but she'll tell you more about that this afternoon. Then at some point in this experience, you get special knowledge. In unity, we would call that spiritual insight, wisdom. And that's what changes people when they come back, because they have absolutely deeply learned that we are all one. So they can't really hurt anybody else without hurting themselves. That it's a universe of order, intelligence, and love. The universal message is love. So then there's a return to the body. It says either voluntary or involuntary. A lot of the times, it's after a lot of discussion with the guardian angel, um, the elder brother. And it's because they have compassion on their family that they come back to take care of their children, parents, or whatever. It's very rarely for selfish reasons that somebody comes back after an NDE if they have a choice. And by the way, that young man I mentioned who had the experience in the water, he changed his career from being a, uh, a business person trying to become a millionaire to going into uh, a more caring career as a, a counselor and health care uh, helper. So um, those are some of the ways that scientists and psychologists can say this is a consistent experience. Two-thirds of people have like five or six of these experiences at least. And, and there are also some negative ones. Just briefly, the most negative one that's been reported is by Daniel Brinkley, who wrote Saved by the Life, excuse me, by the Light. Daniel's this big giant of a man who was very uh, militaristic. He was a sharpshooter in the military, killed dozens of people. He was also an assassin for our government later on, he claims. I don't know if it's true, but certainly the military records are there. He was struck by lightning. Uh, hit so bad that the metal in his shoes fused to the floor, melted. He was in the hospital for months and months, took years before he could really walk. When he went through his review, his panoramic life review, the first one. He was hit by lightning three times, by the way. These stories are so unbelievable. If there weren't medical records, you wouldn't believe it. You know, even in the Midwest. But the first one was the one that changed his life the most. Because he went back and saw every one of his shootings. And at the time, he thought he was doing good for his country. But he, he had to feel what the person felt who died. It wasn't the physical pain. It was the pain of not being able to go home to their families and their friends, not being able to live out their life. And then he also experienced what their families went through and their friends, the sorrow, the missing, the orphan children. It was like he was in their minds, in their bodies. He even saw how future generations would miss that man. He never 
killed anybody. He never went into that career again. <clears throat> I met him a few weeks ago, and I've heard him many times. He is the gentlest, kindest person you could expect. Total change. Total, total change. Now, we're not all going to have NDEs, maybe not even mystical experiences, but there's a lot to learn from these. Um, and I think these are people who get these messages and remember them because they're supposed to share them. And so we're hoping in our, our workshop that we can encourage Amy and Sean to share more about the experience and the after effects. Um, 55% of people after these experiences have psychic abilities. And a lot of us would like to have psychic abilities. ESP, you know, mental telepathy, things like that, seeing the future. In fact, most of the people don't want that. After a while, it's fascinating, but it's a distraction, it's a burden. And they consciously give it up. So I think both Amy and Sean might share some of that with you. But it gives you a, a different perspective on what's important in life. Um, so I think it's time for me to turn, I think, to our last one. Um, but I want you to understand that um, right now in the United States, we have 15 million people who claim in surveys to have had a near-death experience. That's a lot. I'm not sure how many of those really remember something from it. But we do have this wonderful um, library now on the internet and these books of these experiences. And each one brings back a different, slightly different message. It's the same general message, but there's different ways of looking at it. So I will share with you part of Amy's, and I think you'll hear echoes in it. Uh, by coincidence, uh, our meditation this morning, of even the words from the Daily Word, uh, where the Christ light is there, if we acknowledge it, if we're open to it, it is life-changing. So, um, I'm skipping over the first three pages when she goes through how she died, basically came back, and all those details that science handles very well. I'm going to start, though, where she is uh, in coming into that realm of light. I left the initial place, and I began to move quickly, and I felt that I was safe and comfortable. I felt enveloped in love, with a capital L. There was someone, someone tending to me, and I seemed to be at absolute peace with this person. There was so much light coming from this person's face. I could scarcely see any feature in detail, but I remember slightly wavy, dark hair. I believe my guide was a male. But even so, I felt a maternal sense from him. It was as if he were like a mother to me. So I hesitate to label him with a gender. And these spiritual guides are always the most comforting thing. That, As you heard in the other one, you basically merge with it. She says a little later, we were traveling upward, I suppose. My own vibration was changing. There was a big change in frequency. It was as if I was tuning into a different radio station on a grand scale. I was out in the universe, and I was being given a kind of show. Like having an astronomy teacher speak on the beauty of the universe while laying under the stars. But I was out there among the stars. I saw something like holographic words and numbers move in front of me past the stars. And it felt like I was being downloaded with information. I felt at the time that I understood everything. Capital letters, everything. 
that I felt the full truth of laws and order in the universe. One thing that I held on to was that beautiful mathematics of the universe. Because frankly, even with 12 pages single-spaced and all the things she's told us separately from that, she forgot a lot of it. You know, it's like a vague dream where you know you had the dream, but you can't remember much of it. Um, but she brought back a very rich gift. So <clears throat> I'm going to end with this last paragraph, which touches on religion. And, you know, in unity, we're open to all different paths and religions. So this shouldn't be a shock to anyone. Amy says, I wondered at religion while I was there. I quickly received the sense that religion wasn't so important. One's religion, no matter which one they joined or didn't join on earth, was always what was written in their own heart. It was about who the person was, not what label they wrote or they wore or who they were worshipped or who they believed in. Your own frequency, tone, mathematical equation, and vibration says it all. And you can't tinker with that. You are just who you are. I learned that we are here to learn how to love divinely and to become masters of ourselves, to nail down our own lower natures and to raise up within ourselves our own highest self. We are all working toward oneness again. So I hope you'll join me and uh, Amy and Sean. We have a short film of some doctors sharing about these experiences at 2 o'clock. And otherwise, I hope this has been helpful and inspiring. Thank you. Thank you, Garrett. That was, was wonderful. Thank you. If you would like prayer support for challenges or celebrations, please ask our heart ministers. They will be available after the service here in the sanctuary or on the patio. Our heart ministers are wearing the lavender stoles. You are also invited to place a prayer request in our prayer box by the front door or in the book center, or the cool thing now is there's a prayer request button on the website. We will be praying with you throughout the week. It's time for our prosperity celebration. For love in, in action or credit card donations, please use the, the uh, envelopes provided at the back of each of your chairs. I invite you to now take your tithe or love offering in your hand and be aware that God is the source of all your good. Repeat our affirmation with me, together. Divine love through me blesses and multiplies all that I am, all that I have, all that I give, and all that I receive. And I am truly grateful. There's a light Down this empty road Left or right We choose which way to go Sometimes we wander in the darkness On the search for where our hearts will but there is fear down this empty road and we can hear all the doubt down in our souls sometimes we're standing at the crossroads with a question only heaven knows every 
minute and every day how choices can create a million possibilities or just one fate with every hesitation and with every step ahead we can turn this madness into love instead cause there's a dream down this empty road just let it be and the truth will all unfold we'll be caught up in a world Always knowing that the light won't end Every minute, every day our choices can create A million possibilities Or just one fate With every hesitation and with every step ahead We can turn this madness into love instead. See the light. See the light. Down this empty road, so clear and bright. Clear and bright. As all our dreams unfold, we've been lifted from the shadow. On the way to where this love can grow There's a light Down this empty road There's a light Down this empty road There's a light Down this empty road There's a children. Children, you are loved, special, and important. God loves you, and so do we. Now I'd like to, to, to bless our offering. We give thanks for these gifts and commit them to expanding the consciousness of love in our world. Amen. Amen. So please join me with, please join with me in saying our prayer of protection. Oh, let's, let, why don't you rise and join me in saying. <laughs> the light of God surrounds us. The love of God enfolds us. The power of God protects us. And the presence of God watches over us. Wherever we are, God is, and all is well. And for our peace song.
let it shine and, and have fun. fun.